Contract law. Incorporation of contractual terms. The general rule regarding incorporation of contractual terms is that the term must be brought to the attention of the contracting party before or at the time the contract was made. If the term was not brought to their attention it cannot be said that they had accepted the term. Therefore, the term will not be part of the agreement between the parties. In Ollie v. Marlborough Court Hotel, a sign on the back of the door in a hotel room excluding liability for any lost, stolen or damaged property, was not incorporated as the claimant did not see it until after the contract was made. The hotel were liable to pay for the fur coat which had been stolen by the cleaner. Similarly in Thornton v. Shoe Lane Parking, the printed ticket stating the contract was subject to terms came after the acceptance of placing the coins into the ticket machine. The clause excluding liability for personal injury did not form part of the contract. In Chapelton v. Barry, the claimant hired a deck chair. He was given a ticket which he put in his pocket without reading. The ticket contained an exclusion clause excluding liability for personal injury. The court held the term was not incorporated. A reasonable person would not expect the ticket to contain terms and it came after the contract was made. Where there is a written contract which is signed, a party is bound by all the terms in the contract irrespective of whether they were aware of the terms it contained. In Lestrange v. Grawcub, the claimant purchased a cigarette machine which was faulty. She had signed a written document containing a clause excluding liability for breach of contract. This clause was effective and she had no remedy for the defective machine. Note this position of the law in terms of excluding liability for breach of contract is now subject to the provisions of the Unfair Contract Terms Act 1977 and the Consumer Rights Act 2015, the principle that you are bound by what you sign remains. If there has been a misrepresentation of the terms, the clause is not effective. In Curtis v. Chemical Cleaning the claimant took her wedding dress to the dry cleaners. She was asked to sign a form. She asked the assistant what she was signing for and the assistant told her that it excluded liability for damage to the beads. In fact, it excluded liability for any damage howsoever caused. The dress was returned stained. The exclusion clause was not effective as the assistant had misstated the effect of it. A party seeking to rely on an unfair term must demonstrate that they gave reasonable notice. This means they took reasonable steps to bring the term to the attention of a reasonable person. In Thompson v. LMS Railway the claimant was injured whilst stepping off a train. The railway company displayed prominent notices on the platforms excluding liability for personal injury and damage to property due to negligence. The tickets also stated they were subject to terms and conditions displayed on the platform. The claimant was illiterate and could not read the signs. She argued that the exclusion clause was not incorporated into the contract as the railway company had not brought the clause to her attention at the time the contract was made. The court held that the clause was incorporated. The claimant was therefore unsuccessful in her claim for damages. There is only a requirement to take reasonable steps to bring the clause to the attention of a reasonable person. If a clause is particularly onerous, more steps are required to bring it to the notice of a reasonable person. In Interphoto Picture Library v. Stiletto, the claimants gave some photos to an advertising agency for them to select which ones they would like to use. The package of the photos contained a document stating that if any transparencies were kept longer than 14 days a £5 plus VAT holding fee would be charged per photo per day. The defendant had not read this document and then forgot about the transparencies and failed to return them for six weeks. The claimants brought an action claiming a holding fee of £23,783 as specified in the contract. The court held the term was not incorporated into the contract. If the parties have dealt with each other before, the term may be incorporated through previous dealings. This applies even where the term was not brought to the attention of the other party on this occasion. This was seen in Sperling v Bradshaw where the term was contained in a delivery note. The term was incorporated as the parties had an ongoing contractual relationship and they would know the terms from their previous dealings. McCutcheon v McBrain established that the previous dealings must have been consistent, the parties must always have contracted on the same terms. A term will only be incorporated where there is a sufficient number of transactions to amount to a course of dealings. In Hollier v Rambler Motors three to four occasions over a five-year period was not sufficient. 
A term may be incorporated where the use of such terms is prevalent in a particular trade and both parties operate in that trade. In British Crane Hire v Ipswich Plant Hire, a copy of the terms and conditions of hire were handed to the defendant on delivery of a crane. The contract specified that the risk of hire remained with the hirer. The court implied a term into the contract as both parties were in the business of plant hire and it was known to both that the use of such terms was prevalent in the trade. In summary, a term must be brought to the attention of the other party before the contract is made in order to be incorporated. Where there is a written contract which is signed, the party is bound by what they have signed irrespective of whether they have read it. If the effect of the clause has been misrepresented, it may not be incorporated. A party seeking to incorporate a term need only take reasonable steps to bring it to the attention of a reasonable person. A term may be incorporated by previous dealings or through custom in a particular trade. This video is part of a series of videos on contract law from www.e-lawresources.co.uk. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel www.youtube.com slash at e-lawresources. It's free to do so and will help us to keep providing these videos. Check out our website which provides lecture outlines and case summaries. See also www.e-lorevision.org.uk for revision games and quizzes. Thanks for watching.